there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Si je te dis la femme française, quelle est la première chose qui te vient à l'esprit They've got like the accent and just the whole sort of look. They drink a lot of wine, they eat cheese. They smoke a lot, they normally ride bikes. It's quite nice, yeah. It's like independent woman. Strong. Yeah, very strong. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're afraid of, of flirting. But like, no, you can never have it. And they're always slightly more elusive than that, slightly more mysterious, slightly further away. Peut-être c'est ça que vous voulez dire par cette femme française, cette légère distance. What is it about French women? Elle est une icône de la mode. C'est tenir une conversation et c'est une séductrice. It's just the way she presents it, the way she carries it. You know, it's just so, uh, it's just so sexy. I don't know what to say. I read that French women are able to eat what they want and still stay not uh, putting on weight and things like that. Advertising, marketing, books and film perpetuate this uh, mystique of the French woman. I see it like all the time. Every time you read a women's magazine, it says like that, what is the secret of French women? French women always wait. What? Ça, c'est complètement, c'est moi. French women are effortless and graceful. <laughs> French women are always. What? No. <laughs> Where is that taken from? Oui. What do you do? Oh my god! It's hard because um, I'm not all French women, right? I was very, very surprised that English women were like so obsessed with French culture and French women. In England, you open this magazine driving like how to be thinner, how to lose weight, and you're like, oh, how to be French. Mm. So to think about. Uh, I, I honestly didn't know. I mean, I knew about the obsession about French, but I, I didn't know it was that much on the magazines and that much like in your face kind of yeah. thing. French women think of themselves as a type of cheese. <laughs> Which cheese are you? <laughs> I've never heard this one in my life. That's ridiculous. Oh my Chris, I'm in a magazine. French women have small breasts. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, French women flirt with every man. Oh yeah. Hey cameraman. I know exactly. <laughs> Euh, les femmes françaises sont toujours en retard. Grave. Oh, grave. Les femmes, hommes français, ça c'est la première chose que j'ai apprise. On te dit 13h, bah bien à 13h30, facile. Facile. Il faut que tu aies un livre parce que ça peut traîner jusqu'à 14h. French women like to wear their hair in a soigné bun. They wouldn't have worked for us, right? Because of the hair and it just. It's Probably. just not quite the same. Yeah. <laughs> Les femmes françaises ont des amants. That's what you say in, you know, France. Everyone should have a French lover. Un amour. Really? Yes. Moi, j'ai plus l'impression que c'est les hommes français qui donnent une impression d'avoir des amants. Enfin, enfin, récemment, tu vois, avec euh, les contentieux politiques qu'il y a eu, genre François Hollande qui a trompé sa femme, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, yeah. etc. Non? OK, let's try another one. French women don't wear a ring and a necklace at the same time. For today is true no, for me, true but for me as well. Les Françaises portent leur mascara en dormant. 
Again, it's all about the uh, the, the appearance. It seems. Yeah. How do you feel with one of these? I don't like. I kind of for a lot of them, I feel like I've heard them before. Mm. So because I've heard them, I've sort of internalized them. Yeah. Without necessarily identifying with it, but I've sort of accepted that it comes under the French umbrella. But as a French woman, I I just don't. <laughs> this isn't me at all. Like I'm very very different to all these things. So it does feel a bit like I'm inventing something. Like we're all inventing this French woman. I don't know where it comes from, how they do it, but there is something about them, it's true. There is something, you know, they have taste, they have... Uh, look at Emmanuelle Alt, for example, the editor of French Vogue. You see her wearing just a shirt and the jean and heels, which, it's nothing, you know, it's not like... I don't think she spent hours thinking what she's gonna pick up. But she just looks so chic, she's just so amazing, you know, that it's like, wow, you know, you just want to dress like her. C'est une façon d'être à l'aise quand on n'est pas tout à fait à l'aise. C'est une façon de jeter son foulard en arrière. C'est une façon de tenir sa cigarette. De tendre son menton, de laisser tomber sa cendre sur la table. C'est ça le chic, c'est une insolence contrôlée. They preach the natural, they don't really wear a lot of makeup, they don't really brush their hair so much, but they have one item of clothes that's quite nice and that kind of makes the whole thing, I think. It doesn't really look like she's trying too hard. And that's one of the strong characteristics of, of French women that definitely appeals to me. You don't need, you know, everything that matches to dress well and to seduce and to have people look at you. There is this, you know, little, um, you know, little game going on of like being rebel and being, you know, and, and being sexy and feminine at the same time. I think play the game is a good way of describing it. You know, that can be quite seductive or it can be quite coquettish. Um, there's different, different ways that they'll do that, but they are playing. <laughs> they are playing. C'est ce qui fait la particularité de la population française et de la française. C'est une silhouette, c'est une allure, c'est une façon de marcher, c'est une façon d'être. Les vêtements, les accessoires sont là pour cultiver cette allure. Ouais, bah c'est ça, on a toujours un petit basique dans la garde-robe. Ouais. French women is, you know, more simple, more natural look than UK, I think, than here for me. I think that was really interesting. That actually, you know, we hide behind those kind of stereotypes. Yeah, it's hard to know if if how they act or what they dress or what, how we act and how we dress is like effortless or it's actually secretly mm. we do put effort into it, but it seems like it's effortless. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, I don't know. Uh, French women are effortless and graceful all the time. Graceful. To be honest, a very flattering um, myth about us. Well, clearly, I do fart. So, <laughs> I'm not sure as being effortless or graceful, but... You felt effortlessly, I guess. Yeah, well, exactly. Like, I'm not, <laughs> not bothering, but... And gracefully. Okay. Les femmes françaises fument. Bah oui. Complètement. Complètement. Yeah. We don't smoke. I do sometimes. You do? <laughs> yeah, me too. French women are always well dressed. <laughs> I kind of agree with this one. Um, why? I don't know. Because I see it with my eyes, but then it's according to taste and preference. I think so. Is it with your eyes or is it, is it conditioning? Is it what we're bashed with? Les femmes françaises portent du noir, gris et beige. Noir, gris, beige, c'est pas très gay tout ça. Oui. Mais non. Non, je vois pas le. C'est un peu un peu cliché. 
French women are moody. Like it doesn't yeah. apply to what I know of French women. Never had plastic surgery. I know a French friend who's had it. Les femmes françaises n'ont pas de tatouage. <laughs> les femmes françaises aiment les pommes au chocolat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We like it, of course. Yeah. No, we, we love, love it. it. Yeah, we, love it. <laughs> we could talk about pain au chocolat all day, so please stop us. I know. <laughs> Les femmes françaises portent toujours du rouge à lèvres. I wear lipstick. <laughs> Red lipstick. When they go out. Red lipstick. Red lipstick, yeah. Red lipstick. Yeah. Mm, sexy red lipstick. Porter du rouge, c'est déclarer quelque chose. Hein. Je vous dis, on pourrait mettre du rouge à lèvres pour demander une augmentation. Their smile or what they say or how they look at you um, translate. It's in le regard, it could be in the way you look, the way you walk. Quelqu'un qui a du charme, c'est quelqu'un qui séduit, qui sait bouger, qui, sait, qui est naturel. And, and that's cultural too, you know, have we learned to be um, kind of cooking, you know, mischievous. French women seem to think everything is sexy and chic and they make it look effortless, especially when it comes to sex. And if you go through, you know, the love poem, the troubadour, uh, the history and, and, uh, and, and the male, uh, the French male and all that, you, you could, and I'm not a philosopher or an anthropologist, but you could kind of uh, write a book about it. French women appear to us um, sort of in the English-speaking world as, as uh, these wonderful, beautifully groomed, elegant, somewhat aloof uh, creatures. And I think that's why there are so many books on this subject. And this leads to a rather romanticised notion of French women, doesn't it? Well, I think it does. They're definitely flirtatious, I would say. When I look people in their eyes, they just say, oh, oh French, it's like, ooh. <laughs> it's like Oh my god, that's so true. That's so true. It's not necessarily something that's learnt. It's probably something that they just pick up on um, their friends around them, obviously their mothers. But it's because of the myth. That's like a self fulfilling yeah. prophecy. Yeah, that's not, that's not a meme. <laughs> French women don't mind if their husbands, boyfriends, partners enjoy sans cassette. Oh my god, this is so. This is gold! This is gold! Um, okay, my boss is always making, making um, jokes about this and he's always saying, when he, when he leaves, he always says, Hey Sophia, I'm going to my 5 à 7. See ya. The 5 à 7 quoi? I think I've heard something along those lines before, but only in like anglophone media. A uh, five to seven relationship is a relationship outside of marriage. Seriously, the French actually block out time for that? I guess we're pretty laid back with all of this, no? What, so you would let your boyfriend cheat on you? <laughs> or your husband cheat on you? <laughs> Only from some guesses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've never heard of it before. Maybe it's from a movie or something. Mais je vous dis toujours, encore une fois, je ne sais pas trop ce qu'est la femme française, si vous voulez. C'est très mêlé de l'image de cinéma, de, de roman. It really became concrete during uh, the new wave in France where all of a sudden all these incredible actresses came out of those movies that were self-financed or with kind of production that like, left more freedom. I don't know enough about the French cinema of the mid-50s, to be quite honest. But something did change in the world, and I started, you know, the, these films started make, being made. Conventional society in England was very dull and quite sort of skimpy. I mean, English actresses at the time would have been much... Um, I don't understand the Parisians Making love every time they get the chance Paler. And French women would like these sort of red-blooded. Je te plais. Oh, oui, tu me plais. Je te plais beaucoup. 
full-bodied figures in a forbidden landscape. You just caught glimpses of these women. Oh, shit. You should have seen her in the playground. Sex. Terrific. Alice Eskill, she's French. Like any sensible fellow, I was absolutely besotted with Simone Signore in room at the top. You remind me of a boy I used to know at the university in Paris. But of course it's interesting that I don't think in the book she's a French woman. I think that was Jack Clayton's casting of her. In other words, he couldn't find an English woman who had the sexuality, the authority, the sort of warmth, the generosity, all those qualities that she has on the screen. Well, I don't really know this term of new, like new wave. I had to, I had to Google it. <laughs> you too. <laughs> but once I put in new wave, I saw Brigitte Bardot. <laughs> It was so sexy. And again, sort of gobsmacking. When you look at uh, contempt or, you know, the way um, Brigitte Bardot is, is portrayed by Godard, we can see that she's very sexualized, very wild, very free. Et mes soeurs, tu les aimes? Bardo became, you know, not just a body, obviously she was a body, she was a bunch of ideas as well. All of a sudden, French women were completely crystallized, because it's true, it is a fact, you know, that there's some kind of romantic and, uh, and romanticized idea of a French woman. Uh, the first film I saw with, with Bardo was undoubtedly Et Dieu Créa La Femme, a God Created Woman, shot by Vadim. I sort of seem to remember her as, yeah, being pretty naked in that film, actually. But now I go back and look at the film, she seems ridiculously clothed. Maybe I saw a different version of the film, or of course I may have sort of mentally unclothed her. Those actresses become, uh, you know, the, the, the opportunity for the director to create this ideal woman. Beauvoir said of Abado exactly what I feel which is, I know nothing about Brigitte Bardot. I only know BB. The myth, not the individual at all. Burn away all the disguises and the camouflage. The real, the natural, the authentic. They're all words you'd sort of include in a sort of idealized portrait of a woman, aren't they? J'appartiens à tout le monde. On me fait dire des choses que je ne dis pas. On me fait faire des choses que je ne fais pas. C'est un peu, je vous dis, on a un peu l'impression de ne plus être libre. La femme française, si vous voulez, c'est une image. French women, they are all slim. Elle est l'image de chaque homme, en fait. That's what you say in, you know, France. Everyone should have a French lover. C'est-à-dire que chacun y a accroché son image. There are so many books on this. That's one of the things we should take from French women is we should be a little more open and willing to explore. Et c'est l'image tellement diversifiée. Actually a little less open. Oh, less open. A little more mysterious. Oh, okay. Qu'en fait, peut-être elle n'existe pas, cette femme. La femme française est peut-être une invention étrangère. C'est ce que je crois, au fond. There is this French myth that build up. I don't smoke, I've never smoked in my life. I think that's probably a myth. The myth. Kind of mythical French woman myth. The myth for me of the French Française. Imagine carrying this myth on your shoulders. Old French myth. And that's the myth, justement, of the Nana. That all French women do that? Yeah, no, not all French women. I don't know. Everything's a myth, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're wonderful. I mean, we're not wonderful, we're just winners. Winners? Well, if you do all these things, and if really it works, <laughs> does it work? <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works, then you're top of the world all the time. That's really... It's funny, because the more we talk about but it... For what, what is it, about man? Or is it about money? Power? 
That must be very good. What is it for? It is for power. Power. I'm trying to think of a living French woman I know who would match with all this. Donc la femme française, ça, elle n'existe pas en fait. Peut-être. Mais est-ce qu'on existe non Mais ça veut dire, enfin pour moi, la, la, le naturel et la grâce, c'est un truc inhérent à un individu. Donc ça veut dire qu'il y a des gens qui sont naturels et gracieux que des fois et pas d'autres. Enfin, je comprends pas. Enfin, ou t'es naturel et gracieux, ou tu l'es pas en fait. Donc c'est pas ouais. genre. Mais ça, je pense que ça rappelle la danseuse de l'opéra, tu vois. Cette femme un peu frêle, avec ce port de tête, tu sais. C'est complètement nous, ça. Avec ses ballerines qui courent pour attraper son métro, mais d'une façon très gracieuse. Et qui, <rire> avec sa cigarette, <rire> qui s'arrête, mais elle fume, mais de façon tellement élégante. Mais moi, j'ai jamais vu cette femme, en fait. Ah si, mais t'as pas habité dans le sixième. Donc finalement, alors on a déjà réduit la femme française à la parisienne Exactement. et en plus on va réduire la, la femme française à la fille qui habite dans le 6e. Exactement, voilà, au café de Flore. Donc la femme française est une bourgeoise. Euh... Tout à fait, la... Exactement, une la femme française, blanche. voilà, une bourgeoise blanche, euh, bah, donc forcément mince parce qu'elle mange que des choses saines, mais un, un coach pour faire sa gym, son yoga. Mmh. C'est vrai, elle est sur son vélo avec son euh, matelas de yoga derrière. Puis elle passe prendre ses enfants qui sont tout minces et tout beaux. Ils sont parfaits. Ils sont parfaits. Mais, mais qui sommes-nous Bah, moi je, moi, je, moi, je suis une fille du ghetto. Hein. <rire> Can't even pronounce that word artichoke. Anyway. Artichoke soup. Artichoke soup. Les femmes françaises mangent des soupes aux artichauts. <laughs> kind of soup. Artichoke. Artichoke. French women wear belted trench coats. It's like the older generation. Yeah, it's like yeah. the people born in the 50s. Les femmes françaises apprennent le ballet à l'école. French women wear scarves with everything. That's old school, I think. Yeah. Les foulards, scarves. Well, they are one of the greatest accessories of the French women. For example, this one. You can just wear it like that to show your color. But you can also fold it in two and play with it show the color that you want to show that's really the trick of the french woman and if you want you can wear it like that you have endless ways of showing your scarves and it all depends on what you wear what mood you are in and have fun with it because scarves are really easy and they make a statement about your own brand identity <laughs> We hate how to books, you know, we laugh at them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we never had a how to, you know, how to put a scarf together. I mean, I was shocked in America when people asked me, you know, could you write in a book how to? And I said, but we don't have a how to. So how did you learn? Well, I watched my mother. Moi, je, je sais que des fois, il ouais, y a des trucs comme ça que ma mère m'a appris, genre sur comment se tenir en société. I was told so many things about color and like what colors you were allowed to wear together and what not to wear yeah. together. Me too. I have friends who, when they read my book, said, you know, I've never worn a scarf because I'm, I'm, I don't know how to do it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. That's, that's the word, you know. And I said, afraid of what? I've got friends. I've got French friends. And one of them was the prince. She's got amazing scarves. And it's beautiful the way they wear it. So they wear it really a French way, but it, they are very special scarves. Again, you know, don't make judgment. They, they didn't have a mother who dressed up on Sunday like mine did or, you know, another way for another woman. I think that the vision of the French woman is very outdated. Yeah, a bit out of date, but old-fashioned. Super yeah. old-fashioned. They need to update their data. Yeah, they, do. they kind of do. I think that this stereotype is there for a lot of years. Depuis très longtemps en fait, et que aujourd'hui, justement, vu que nous on fait partie d'une génération nouvelle, je pense que ça, ça écrase cette, ce stéréotype. 
et que c'est un mythe, finalement. Et Flatteur, euh... mais un mythe. <rire> Alors, c'est une définition qui est apparue au fur et à mesure des époques. Et on peut considérer que euh, l'image de la française euh, s'est construite à partir de Marie-Antoinette. C'est la première reine de France à avoir donné le ton pour la mode. Elle a néanmoins laissé le souvenir d'une femme coquette qui appréciait les étoffes, les belles coiffures, les robes. Ces éléments historiques sont valables dans la mesure où ils se sont installés au fil du temps et ont pu être copiés. Aujourd'hui, il y a dans la haute couture, Paris reste la capitale mondiale où il y a le plus de maisons de haute couture et reconnues comme telles. The myth is current because it is perpetuated uh, on purpose uh, to sell and uh, also because it still interests us and so we keep it alive. Et à fond appel à des des icônes, des, des célébrités, pour porter l'image de leur maison. L'objectif est, est de vendre du rêve. Elle peut être extraordinaire si je l'écris, ou si je la photographie, ou si je vous regarde, ou si je le portraitise d'une certaine façon. Tant qu'elle est dans la vie courante, Tant que je ne la sors pas de la vie courante, par des mots, par des couleurs, par des attitudes, par un vêtement, par une façon de parler de vous, elle n'est rien. Rien n'existe sauf de la façon dont nous le voyons. Alors les Françaises peuvent aussi s'identifier parce que c'est une image flatteuse. Et elles-mêmes peuvent être prises au jeu et et aussi vouloir correspondre à cette image. Là, c'est habile quand on connaît cette image et qu'on peut jouer avec. That's two pictures of me. That's Mimi, more like colorful and a bit more sportswear and and this one is a bit that's like my Tinder picture. This is you as French. Yeah, that's me as French. So, yeah. It's like Mimi, the sort of, you know, <laughs> being a bit sort of seductive and sort of like... Like sometimes it's kind of weird because you don't need to say anything else. You just come up to someone and you're like, I'm French and that's it. Like you play French and it works because you don't have to prove anything else. You say I'm French already. People are nice. It's a nice dynamic, you know. And if you're from Paris, then they're like, I love Paris. So. It's always a nice start in a conversation, and I think then there's the other aspect. Being French is like sexy for some, mm. for some guys, or British guys at yeah. least. Is je ne sais quoi, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I, I asked my, my male friends, and they said... French women are meant to be quite, so yeah, I've heard they're quite sexy. Yeah, but like, again, which French women are they talking about? I'm not sure about that. I feel like I play on this yeah, being French thing, but I feel like I, I'm a bit cold and like I kind of put up a barrier mm. or pretending like you don't care, yeah. but really you just, you want to go home yeah. with them. <laughs> Maybe we got comfortable with that reputation thanks to all those new wave actresses. So now we're kind of sitting on our laurier and we don't make any efforts anymore and everybody still think of all these incredible actresses and still think, oh my God, French women are just great. And we're like, yeah. We, We're fantastic, and, but actually that's not true. We're just kind of like sitting on all those past efforts that other people did, maybe. I've used it to, to, uh, to excuse my, my behavior, especially in relationships. I would see multiple people. I would see, I would see different, uh, different partners, and I would say, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just French. Really? Yeah. It's bad. I, 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 I apologize. <laughs> Where's the camera? I apologize to you. The person I did that uh, to. Why, why is it more valid to say like, oh, sorry, I'm French, than sorry, I do whatever I want? I don't know, it just, that's why I'm getting a bit confused because, yeah, it's an easy way, but then it's, I don't know, like... Because people buy it. I mean, yeah. being a Frenchwoman don't yeah. um, determine who I am. But the more I talk about it and the more I, I travel 
And the more I see that the way I see my sexuality and love uh, is very much influenced by the fact that I'm French. If France is known for its cuisine, its wine, and its women, what is it about French women? I don't know what to say. I, I read that French women are able to do the lives they want and eat what they want and still stay not uh, putting on weight and things like that. You're not mentioning anything to do with a certain kind of flirtatiousness? No, I don't know. I wouldn't think of that because... <laughs> oh yes, no, I didn't think of that. Et déjà, moi je comprends même pas le mythe sur enfin, pourquoi elles auraient envie d'être une femme française. Enfin, je vois pas en quoi c'est... Enfin, moi j'aimerais bien aussi être une femme anglaise parce que je trouve que les femmes anglaises, elles ont, elles ont beaucoup de chance de pouvoir... Enfin, je trouve qu'elles s'habillent assez, tu vois, court, tout ça. Oui, elles sont, elles sont assez et elles se font pas, Voilà, et elles sont pas trop emmerdées. Ouais. À Paris, c'est impossible de s'habiller comme ça. We're much more at ease in England, that's why I came here in the first place. I think it's like, kind of like the dark way of being French in a way, because you're so much exposed to judgment. Et d'ailleurs, j'ai vu un reportage d'une anglaise qui, euh, c'était assez horrible, hein, parce que je vais dire, mais bon, elle était habillée bah, comme une anglaise, quoi. C'était enfin comme elle avait envie d'être habillée au final. Dans le métro, il y a un mec dans le métro par exemple, ah, un mec qui lui met une main au cul. Donc tu les vois sur la caméra de surveillance et elle se retourne parce qu'elle est pas habituée, parce que j'ai l'impression qu'en, je me trompe, mais qu'en Angleterre c'est quand même beaucoup plus respectueux. Euh, elle se retourne, et elle lui fout une gifle. Et tu vois ensuite, tu la vois ensuite témoigner le visage boursouflé de bleu parce que le type l'avait tabassé parce que elle avait osé lui mettre une gifle parce qu'il avait mis. Now you've been looking at a report, shocking figures. Um, is this related to France or is this a French, global? French report. A French report. 100% of women have been harassed at least once on public transport. That's right. That's Now, a shocking figure. C'est pas si cool en fait d'être une femme française. Parfois, on aimerait bien être quelque chose d'autre. En tout cas, ce qui est sûr, c'est qu'en France, il y a une espèce de tolérance au sexisme ordinaire euh, qui est plus forte que dans certains pays, parce que c'est vu comme un truc valorisant de séduction à la française, de justification de cette espèce de sexisme ordinaire sous couvert d'un truc culturel. On a lancé euh, une tribune qu'on a publiée euh, dans le journal Libération, qui s'appelait Ballet Pattes, qui avait été signé par une, cinquantaine, une quarantaine de journalistes pour dénoncer l'attitude de, des hommes politiques à l'égard des journalistes en racontant euh, qu'elles étaient aussi tout simplement nos conditions de travail parfois au quotidien, c'est-à-dire des remarques sur comment on était habillé, euh, si on était bien bronzé, euh, à proposer genre contre un, euh, je te donne une info mais en échange euh, tu, tu viens à l'apéro, etc., etc. Parfois des cas relevant, pouvant relever de harcèlement sexuel. Or, le harcèlement sexuel touche les, les Français comme, comme tous les citoyens de, de, de beaucoup de pays. Et donc il y a une espèce de paradoxe où à la fois euh, on est tout à fait protégé, l'article 222.33 est là, les critères sont clairs, la répression existe, les condamnations sont là, et en même temps, beaucoup de gens hésitent à porter plainte, à déposer plainte, à aller jusqu'au bout, et hésitent même à témoigner dans le procès de quelqu'un d'autre, alors qu'ils ont été le témoin direct du harcèlement sexuel. La limite est toujours, euh, est-ce que ça ne fait pas partie de, du jeu de séduction à la française est -ce que, Où est la limite Avec des gens autour de vous qui vous diront « mais non, ne le fais pas, ne porte pas plainte, c'est toi qui as mal pris les choses, tu t'y prends mal, il faut lui répondre enfin, », ou alors euh, « vas-y, c'est évident, il, tu ne peux pas accepter ça, c'est irrespectueux et anormal ». Donc, en tout cas, la loi est là et elle est protectrice. Ça, oui. La séduction, ça n'induit pas en soi un rapport inégalitaire. Je veux dire, on se séduit tous les jours, tout le temps, enfin, amoureusement, amicalement, enfin, j'en sais rien. Enfin, voilà, c'est pas du tout le problématique. La question, c'est que ça sert parfois à justifier un rapport inégalitaire. Et tu disais que la femme française, c'était un sujet léger, mais... En fait, je trouve pas, en tant que femme, le fait qu'on attende de moi que euh, je porte du mascara la nuit ou que je sois abaisable quand je fais la queue pour acheter le pain, ouais, c'est ce genre de petite agression qui ensuite se transforme en, en pression euh, qui, est, qui peut paraître euh, pas importante parce qu'elle est presque invisible, mais elle est quand même là et on grandit avec. Et... I'm really disappointed in this stereotype, basically. I'm really, I don't... 
I don't see myself, I don't see the people I love in, in them, I don't see I don't see what I also want to see out of coming out of France as well. I would like to see something different coming out of France. Because they, they keep the woman, the French woman, in this kind of mythical way where she's sort of like, oh, she's very beautiful and she wears a chiffon scarf, but she's not going to get into politics. I'd like that to see in those books. What we're thinking, what was our feminist movement? Yeah. How strong that was? Where did it go? What is our values in that way? How do we ed educate? in a positive way, not in the cliché of just being pretty for the man. I think there's a lot of other things, and I can, can get annoyed just now, so I'm going yeah. to stop. I feel like I'm not a French woman, because if French women are like this or look like this, I'm not a French woman. This is why I feel so. It's in your face all the time, these images yeah. that um, a French woman is supposed to be like or look like. I don't see. Yeah, this is just Paris. Yeah. <laughs> Il manque 99% des autres femmes françaises en fait. Euh, alors je, rapidement, je pourrais vous dire effectivement dans les maisons de couture ou de parfum, c'est vrai qu'on n'y a pas beaucoup de visages français noirs. C'est vrai. Là, je bon, je ne connais pas suffisamment ce milieu aussi. Hein, à tout ce que je peux formulé comme idée, c'est que dans le cinéma français, les actrices françaises, euh, de plus en plus, on voit des visages euh, marocains, africains, euh, oui, d'Afrique du Nord, d'Afrique noire. I grew up not really seeing myself portrayed in magazine. Is that general feeling of not quite fitting in, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, all these comments and I totally don't relate to it. But it's interesting to, mm -hmm. very interesting to read that all these quotes <laughs> have actually been published as well. Oh. But even when you look, when you watch French movies, the, the French actresses, they are a bit of the same. It's true. Really slim, really It's a true. bit chic rebelle. <laughs> but we, <laughs> no, that's chic true. Rebelle. A bit like with her cigarette on the map. Yes, like, and the coffee care. and cigarette. Yeah. It's true. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Like, It's like, I do what I want to do. But yeah, but things, you know, but that's why um, it, it is surprising and it isn't, like you said, because that's the France that we grew up in. Mm -hmm, yeah. And that really never really included us. I'm director of ENA, which is the uh, National School of Administration in France. I've been director of this prestigious uh, Grande École, as we do say, uh, meaning... Uh, Les Grandes Écoles, the big schools, or I guess you could say the great schools, it's our word du jour. Now, there's kind of a collective awareness that it's here and not at universities where the political, engineering and business elite are educated, or perhaps you might say molded because the uh, school was created in 1945 and it was the first prestigious Grand École which was directly open to women. So of course we could do better in France. We could have better record on that, on diversity. But political parties in France, and I would say in England, probably in America, the way we see it right now, and everywhere in the world, are all of them outdated. They have not done their cultural revolution. It's not only about uh, gender equality, it's about approximately everything they are doing and the way they are organized. Au 18e siècle, les philosophes considèrent qu'un pays, qu'une nation, c'est comme un être humain, sa naît, sa vie et sa meurt. On décide donc de donner à la France une forme humaine. Il y a quelques députés qui disent, au moment de la Révolution, il faut donner à la France l'image d'un homme. C'est la force, c'est la virilité. Quelques députés disent non. Donnons à la France l'image d'une femme. Marianne représente pour moi cette quête, cette lutte pour la liberté des esclaves. C'est une représentation très forte de ce que doit être la République à travers le combat également mené par les femmes. Plus de liberté, plus d'égalité et plus de fraternité.
The problem with feminism in France, I mean, the problem, I don't know, but a problem, I think, is that it's definitely not for everyone. Yeah. That it's not, um, yeah. it's not equal, it's like... No, really, not in France. I think one of the big French myths, and, and probably something French would like to be proud of, is France represents a lot of freedom values. Um, and, you know, when we were kids at school, they would taught us that this is a free country, like religion free. And, you know, that I, I got told at school it was not okay to wear a big Christian cross as it was not okay to cover your hair. I think, I hope I understand the values of the Republic, and one of the three key values of the Republic is liberté. Now, where is the liberty in you telling Muslim women that they cannot go onto the beach covered in a way that they would like to be covered? Where, where is the liberté in that? Mais, mais monsieur, c'est une violation, encore une fois, de tout ce à quoi nous croyons. In France, we're not encouraged to talk about our differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, have you, um, when you came to the UK, did you have to like fill in any like diversity form and like fill in like your ethnicity and your religion and all that stuff? Um, in France, that's illegal. Yeah. It's, it's literally illegal to talk about your difference yeah, so and like... You're French and that's it. Yeah, yeah. it's... Um, and I admire the thought behind that, I guess, but it's always that thing in France where like there's the ideal and like the reality is so far, but like yeah. no one talks about the gap between the ideal and yeah. the reality. When my teachers would ask me where you're from because I was black, they would expect me to say that I'm from Benin. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your papers? What is your nationality? Mm -hmm. Is French and there's a fine line. Mm -hmm. So I started calling my French, myself, myself French here when I came here 16 years ago, because our people are, oh, you're born in France, so you're French. I was like, well, being all my life there, never felt that I could really mm -hmm. say that I was French. Okay. Because of the way I was treated. Mm -hmm. And people from my generation is exactly the same, but here it's very different. Mm -hmm. You know, a black person or Arabic person or whatever, they'll say, yeah, I'm British, but my parents are from Nigeria or Jamaica, and I never felt I could call myself French, even though I was born and grew up there. Clearly, there's a problem. There is a problem. There's a, yeah. actually like a huge, really, really deep, in France, disgusting yeah. problem. Donc en fait, la plupart des Français, ils sont encore en fait dans cette idée de la France de Charles de Gaulle. Vive la République Vive la France Ils veulent encore rester dans cette ancienne France. Vive la République Vive la France Vive la République Vive la France Vive la République Vive la France Mais il ne faudrait pas oublier que nous sommes au 21e siècle et euh, par la mondialisation, il y a une mixité. Donc on doit en fait s'y faire et on doit avancer. On ne peut pas rester en fait toute notre vie dans cette république d'avant. Et il faudrait avancer pour construire ensemble en fait cette république qui représente euh, ces jeunes dynamiques et qui, euh, qui en veulent et qui veulent aussi et qui aiment la France. Ils aiment la France mais ils ne se sentent pas quelque part euh, aimés, si on peut dire ça comme ça. Le modèle, on va dire, français, l'idéologie qui est, qui, est, qui est promue, cet idéal, ce fantasme presque, c'est de très belles valeurs, vraiment, et qu'on qu peut, on peut y adhérer. Malheureusement, je pense qu'il n'y a pas forcément des, comment dire, des chemins méritocratiques qui correspondent à ces valeurs-là. You know, liberté, égalité, fraternité, c'est comme, like, imagine, does this already... It's already achieved, so yeah, we don't have to talk true. about equality. It's not true because when people think about French women, they don't really think, for example, about me. Mm. I, I guess they probably think about this kind of woman, right? When you say the French beaches are those of Brigitte Bardot, that sounds absurd to many people. I mean, why can't women decide whether they want to look like Brigitte Bardot or look like somebody else?
la femme française est souvent blanche. Ce qui est un truc avec lequel je ne suis pas du tout d'accord. Elle est systématiquement blanche, c'est quand même incroyable. C'est important surtout pour, euh, pour les jeunes en fait. Quand on est jeune, on est encore euh, une période de notre vie qui n'est qui, qui est pas facile, hein, une période où on se cherche, on, on, on essaie de s'identifier à telle ou telle personne. Et, euh, la représentation est, euh, est primordiale pour moi. You know that in some of um, our communities, there is a problem of skin bleaching. Yes. So of course, Colorism. if you see people on the magazine who have white skin all the time, straight hair, blonde hair, I think there is a symbolic violence, but there is also a bit of physical violence that you're going to do it to yourself. Yeah. Because you want to be slimmer, you want to have a um, fairer skin, skin, straight hair. Yeah. You cannot accept yourself. You don't see yourself in the beauty yeah. magazines. Yeah. I think this representation is essential, yeah. especially to young women, yeah. to young men as well. Yeah. It's hard to separate what's you, what's just you and your personality and what, what is French about you. It doesn't even make sense to, to say that it's your French side. Sometimes people have a reaction being like, oh, it's because you're French. And I'm just like, oh, it's just because I'm me. I'm not sure the representation has changed. That's the problem. Women have changed everywhere, thank God, and I hope it's going to keep changing. It wouldn't be so amazing if I could represent the women of France today, which is so diverse of course. and absolutely beautiful. I do feel like we have a say. We have, we have a role to play in this. Toi, tu peux aller chercher l'information au lieu que ce soit quelqu'un d'autre qui compile l'information que lui veut que tu aies. Ouais. Toi, tu vas choisir. I think the social media are really helpful because it gives us a voice, so many things to say, yeah. so many untold stories. So just use whatever platform you want. Just celebrate your Frenchness. Nobody is going to come and tell me I'm not French today. It's not only French for me, I think it's for everywhere. It's really all woman, right? Femme française, c'est pas une femme. C'est toutes les femmes ensemble, tu vois. C'est toutes les cultures réunies. I'm having more and more conversations with people, and they're rich, and I'm very happy to be alive to do these things, because for me, communication and enriching each other's life by what I hear, what I uh, share, to have a bit more of human interaction. Um, but I'm, I'm enjoying that here and in France and everywhere. I think that with another generation which is both more individual but more familiar with the way to express their views uh, through social media or citizen actions which are not labeled as political, but are actually politics. Politics is the way to make a difference wherever you are, and whoever you are.